It's amazing what you can find buying abandoned storage units. It's got to be one of the most exciting things you can do with your money. At least that's what I used to think before that fateful day two years ago when I came across the Mopsy sisters. I remember as soon as I opened the rusted door to the unit I'd won at that auction, I could already feel there was something different about this one. Then as I looked to the back, I saw it. Among the dusty boxes and forgotten furniture stood a peculiar figure, an animatronic from the old Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater. As I approached it, I lifted the tag labeled The Mopsy Sisters. I couldn't believe my luck. Nostalgia hit me hard. I somewhat remembered the Mopsy sisters from my childhood, but they were a little old for me. I think I had maybe caught a glimpse of them in an old commercial or something, but that was it. They were these three upper bodies attached together with googly eyes and a mop on top for their head that would sing and shift from side to side on stage. Kind of a cheap-looking animatronic if you ask me. But I guess they had a bit of charm to them, albeit a creepy one. I decided to bring the animatronic home, thinking it would make a great conversation piece if I could get it working again. My wife Laura and our two girls, Kaylee and Anna, were a bit less enthused, considering they didn't even know what this character was, and it looked a little creepy, I guess. They humored me in my eccentricities, though. I thought it would be really difficult to get it working again, but to my surprise, once I fully assembled it and connected up everything, it worked pretty much instantly. However, that was when weird things began to happen. The first incident was minor, a power outage in the middle of the night. I thought nothing of it, until I had a nightmare that night. I remember it was like one of those sleep paralysis dreams, where you're stuck in your bed and can't move, except this time... There was a mop-headed figure standing at the foot of it, swaying from side to side, a front a backdrop of pitch darkness, its eyes glowing brighter and brighter until I awoke, screaming. Yet I saw it as a nightmare and nothing more. Then our daughter Anna started sleepwalking. We found her in the basement more than once, standing motionless in front of the animatronic. Each time, she would be murmuring about the sisters, singing to her how they were all going to go on an adventure. Desperate for answers, I started researching the history of the Mopsy sisters to see if I could find anything about why this might be happening. I came across news reports about the Coosa Road, Chuck E. Cheese location, and what I found was extremely unsettling. In the late 1970s, Three young sisters had gone missing at the Coosa Road Chuck E. Cheese. None of their bodies were ever recovered, but rumors among locals suggested they had been kidnapped by a cult leader who worked at the location and then sacrificed in a disturbing ritual. It also claimed that apparently he used a few of Mopsy's strands of hair to tie up the little girls. Ever since that, restaurant patrons and employees claimed to see little girls wandering around the animatronic, even after the store had closed for the night. That was all I needed to hear. I knew at that point I had to get rid of this thing before my daughter was forced to join those little girls. So I immediately headed over to the basement at around midnight, and I heard this singing in distorted, haunting voices. The words were unintelligible, but the melody was eerily familiar. Then I heard Anna's voice join in. I had no idea when she had gotten down there, but I bursted into the room and saw her standing in front of the animatronic, swaying with the music. Only after approaching her, I realized it wasn't Anna. It was another little girl I at first didn't recognize. Yet I could still hear Anna's voice. The girl was standing with her back to me, her hands raised as if she were conducting an invisible orchestra. The Mopsy sisters' eyes were fixated on her, their mouths unnaturally moving in unison with her whispers. Where's Anna? I yelled, grabbing the little girl on the shoulder and turning her around. I could tell then that she was one of the girls from the article I had just read. 
And that wasn't all. One of the animatronics' mouths was moving, and the sound of Anna's voice was coming out. Fear shot down my spine, and I ran back upstairs into Anna's room, where my fears were only confirmed. Anna was not in her bed, or anywhere else. I then ran back downstairs, only to find that the other little girl was now missing as well, along with the back door swinging open. We called the police that night, and I told them everything that had happened leading up to her disappearance, including the purchase of the animatronic. The police were not super interested in hearing about that part, though. The next day, I contacted a medium who specializes in missing people. She listened to my story with a grave expression, nodding occasionally. When I finished, she agreed to visit the house that evening to conduct an investigation, and informed me that the only way to get Anna back was to destroy the animatronic. Although she admitted she could not be totally certain this would even work. We left the house that night staying at a motel while we figured out what to do. As we packed up our things to leave the house, Laura found an old photograph tucked away in the chest that the animatronic had come with. It was a picture of three young girls smiling and holding hands with the Mopsy sisters, and one of them looked strangely similar to Anna. Scribbled on the back was a chilling message. Missing June 6, 1978. That night, after finally getting to sleep at the motel, I woke up in the middle of the night to a familiar haunting melody. It echoed through the thin walls, the sound of the Mopsy sisters singing their tune. Only, that wasn't the scary part. That came when I looked over at the bed beside mine and noted that my only daughter Kaylee was missing and that the motel room door was slightly open. I bolted upright, heart pounding. I stepped out into the parking lot and followed the sound. I grabbed a large metal shovel from the back of my truck and turned a corner to witness the animatronic somehow in the empty parking lot beside a dumpster. Its eyes glowed with malevolent intent as Kaylee slowly sleptwalked towards it. In a fit of rage and terror, I lifted up the shovel, charging forward and swinging it at one of its heads. Sparks flew, and the sisters' faces twisted into grotesque masks of fury as Kaylee awoke from her trance. Quick, get back to our room, honey. Their mouths moved, emitting a guttural, otherworldly scream as she ran away. I then began to smash the animatronic, but no matter how much I did, it seemed like it wasn't doing enough damage. Frustrated, I got a tank of gasoline from my truck, but when I brought it back... I just couldn't bring myself to light it up. I knew what the medium had told me, but what if she was wrong? Could I be murdering my own daughter? I returned back to the motel room defeated, very unsure if I had made the right decision, although I knew we had to get out of there. So we got in the car and just started driving. We didn't stop for a very long time. In fact, weeks passed, and we started a new life in a totally different city. Luckily, we hadn't seen any sign of the animatronic, so that was good enough for me. However, as I walked by a seaside carnival in town one day, I felt my blood run cold. There, standing in a booth, among other animatronic figures, was a Mopsy Sisters. Was it the same one? I wasn't sure. However, its eyes locked onto mine, and I felt for a second that she was in there, Anna was still in there. I fled from the carnival, and we never returned again. I still wonder sometimes if she'll ever make it back. Maybe she just needs to find a replacement like the other girl did. Then she'll come find us again. Maybe she'll come home. Maybe someday. <laughs>